This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my weekend review for Monday, September 7th, 2015. We had had a basically a unanimous consensus on this past week's Periscope to move the weekend review from Sunday to Monday in order to encompass some of the Asian markets and if there's any new information. So let's dive right in. I've been saying on the Twitter stream, and if you're not following me, my handle is at Justin Pulitzer. You should be following me. I have been looking at a few criteria that I see as key for the direction of the market. One is that you need the Fed to come out and say that they are going to say lower for longer with regard to interest rates. Two is the VIX. You can see on this chart we had a new spike high up here of 53 and that has broken a pattern here of lower highs and kind of seemingly lower lows. We had an anchor low here. We've had the volatility greatly expand. It has somewhat contracted, but we are still above 25 and above this 3106. My concern, and I've said this for a while, is whenever the VIX is over 25, that puts crash risk onto the table. And Thursday, we had a bit of a look below and fail. And then Friday, we closed still above the 25 level um, at 2780. So I've said for a little while now, I think that we are unfortunately going to need to see a VIX rally to a lower high and then roll over before we can quote unquote be safe. That is just my thesis, but if um, we are, as long as we're above this like 2520, let's just call it 25 for uh, to keep it simple stupid, there is still down, significant downside risk to the market. The other couple of issues that I see as being key is the treasuries, meaning that we need interest rates to stay lower. You can see with all the Fed talk about Fed about interest rates going higher, they in fact went lower here. We did, however, have a bit of a reversal. We have come back down to kind of test the breakout of the range and held the 50. I believe that the um, TLT is a little bit vulnerable as long as it's below the 2009 crash top of 123.15. If this 50 MA were to give, I would think we would come back and retest these like 119s, <clears throat> excuse me, to 118s, maybe even 117s. I had said a while back that I thought 117 was a very important pivot. You can see the low here was this 118.13 and the highs up here were like in the 119. So I could see easily this rolling back to retesting this, um, this key area of the breakout. If this does wind up punching through, we'll probably fill the gap pretty quickly to the 126s. So lower interest rates are also key. I've said also we need to see oil go higher, a little bit higher. So we did rally back up. We retested the backside of the old uptrend line, which you see here, um, any looks below is before rejected. This time seems to be a little bit different. We seem to be rejecting a retest of it, and the 50-day moving average has been a bit of a weight on the um, price. So I would say you really need to see closes above the 50-day moving average and to get back up above this um, 54.24. I do believe that 50 will be a bit of a ceiling. You can see the low here was 50.58, and then we really kind of collapsed. So I would say between 50 and 54 is likely going to be a little bit of trouble for oil in the meantime, but I do believe that as long as we can stay off these lows and start making higher lows and higher highs, that would be probably incrementally positive for the world, the, um, for the US stock market because that would mean that the um, risk of deflation is mitigating. And I believe the real problem for the central bank uh, here is deflation. I'm gonna go over the employment numbers and some of the GDP info in a little while and you'll see where I'm coming from. Another really key indicator here is the dollar. Uh, the dollar here, as you can see, has had quite a rally and has been in a bit of a consolidation channel, a uh, little bit of a down channel. We did puncture through, we had a bit of a head and shoulders top here, you can see, and now we're sort of rechecking the neckline. So the 50 day moving average, like it is being a bit of a ceiling on um, oil, it's also being a bit of a ceiling on the dollar, which is good. The real fear I would say here is if the dollar starts getting back up to the channel high and taking these like 97s and rechallenging 100, I would think at that point that this 100 would be 
a little less secure and we might want to go look start looking at some Fibonacci extensions to the upside and unfortunately if that happens that means significantly more downside in the US stock market why is that international companies like Apple like Facebook like Nike like almost all of the S&P 500 will be having earnings that estimates are too high because of dollar risk exposure. So moving the dollar higher, bad for the stock market. And then of course, there is China. And China is starting to come back down into some levels here that would really start to interest me. One being the large 61.8 Fibonacci retracement down in the 32.15 area with a potential overshoot into the 28s. I don't want to go too much more into those levels, but you can see there was a reference low in the 32s here. And I do believe that there should be a tradable bounce somewhere in this area. So I am looking for China to have some type of a bounce a little bit soon, but um, we were down. And what I would say is a little bit encouraging is that Sunday futures were up a little bit, I think about nine bucks, which was off the highs in the face of China being down about 2%, so that is good. So let's go back and discuss our butt pals and friends at the Fed. So it hasn't helped that uh, Vice Chair Stan, Lack, oh, sorry, Stan Fisher has been out talking about being hawkish. Um, he's trying to keep the September rate hikes on the table. I've believed for a while that the Fed has been trying to jawbone the market a little bit lower to avoid this type of a move like China had, this parabolic move that ends in, the, in this kind of crash, which of course we know would probably result in more QE. Um, his sentiments have been eff, um, echoed by Jeff Lacker and Dennis Lockhart. These are other hawkish members of the Fed, they have the FOMC, they have been wrong and hawkish for quite some time. They were quite late on the financial crisis. And um, they were talking about holding rates and even raising rates um, very early. And we have really not seen, in my opinion, a um, sustainable amount of growth or even the Fed meeting their own targets for us to be entertaining interest rate hikes. And um, that has been sort of um, been uh, Dudley, um, he's another member of the FOMC from New York, and he has been saying that now might not be a time to um, to raise interest rates. Now the Fed, the, the things they look at, they've been talking about the unemployment rate, which is fairly low at uh, with a headline number of 5.1%, and you had a uh, disappointing jobs number on Friday. It came in at about 173,000 jobs, and I think the expectation was about 217. And that's a pretty big miss. Um, a lot of people, the talking heads, the complacency have been saying that it's no big deal, that the um, there'll be revisions higher, and uh, as there were in the July numbers, which came up from 215 to 245, which is a pretty healthy jump. Um, you know, payrolls have been um, private payrolls were a bit of a, a bit of a miss. They were um, down significantly. To um, they were at 14. I'm sorry, they were up one to 140, but that missed the 210 estimate. And um, there was a revision in July from 210 to 224, but that is also rather on the light side. Again, you know, there's some talk about possible revisions higher. And then, um, you know, the, hour, the hourly earnings um, wages have, have gone up 0.3% as opposed to 0.2 in July. So on the surface, this seems like progress, but when you look at where we're coming from, it's really rather lackluster. Uh, there was an increase in in the GDP from um, I forget what the like two and change to three and change. Um, I had that number. I for some reason don't have it on my new paper here, but um, that is a very healthy increase in the GDP. The um, big problem, though, is that the first quarter was really weak, and a lot of that has been attributed to weather or what have you. The fact is, is that it was weak. It was a negative number that was revised up to 0.6, and I believe that this now the second quarter GDP is sort of a pull was like the makeup sort of people push their business into the second quarter. So while it seems like the second quarter was stronger than you know initially expected, it was really just makeup for the for the weak um, first quarter, and none of those numbers really factor in the meltdown we've seen in China since then. There's been a lot of global weakness. We know commodities have been crashing. So the Fed has not been able to meet their 
own mandate of a 2% inflation rate. Yes, they've met it in terms of their unemployment being down to full, un full employment, which is between 5 and 6%. But the quality of those numbers are fairly weak. We know that a lot of that is coming from service industry jobs, such as waiters and waitresses. And we have now seen a collapse in terms of ener um, energy companies. ConocoPhillips is starting to lay off by the tens of thousands, and manufacturing jobs have been kind of junky. So the quality of the jobs that have been, I guess, fueling this, this, this move aren't really that great. And if you factor in people who are part-time who want to be full-time, and then people who have been unemployed so long they're no longer counted, these numbers are really quite crappy. So that is my take on the global macro picture and the Fed. I do believe lower for longer is going to be the, um, the optimal word. The whole, the whole purpose of the Fed has been for the last few years to suppress volatility and to inflate asset prices. And they aren't meeting their measure in terms of their 2% inflation target. And as with regard to volatility, we are seeing a huge spike in it. Um, I would say the global uncertainty in China and the um, recent decline in the stock market, the Fed may say that they don't look at it, but I believe they do, I think should keep them on hold. Um, I think actually, I, I'll go a little bit further and say that I think it would be a major policy error, and I think they would be crazy to raise in the face of a slowing global economy. I, if they're going to raise, it should be on an upswing, not a downturn. Anyway, let's go into SPY. So I, I have, I'm, I'm kind of going to be on a bit of a longer term time frame because some of the stuff we're going to talk about is really more of a macro view. You can see that even from back, um, back here, this is like um, July from last year, uh, two, from, yeah, from last year into now, we have been in a um, in a range. We've kind of had, we had it. We had a correction down to the channel low. This is a channel that's drawn in from the uh, debt crisis low in 2011. And we have been in a steady channel upward for a while. And in the past year, we've just been consolidating up at the highs. And I had said that I thought that up here this time, quote unquote, could be different because we reached a 1.618 Fibonacci extension from the 2007 peak to the 2009 low, and that um, we could see something a little bit more severe. It did take a lot of time to develop. You can see we've been in this chop mode, but we finally had the break out of the range. You can see we took out these 204s, we took out these 202s, we took out these 197s, and we filled the gap at the 190, and we came back down to the um, 181s, which, were, were the, which, was, which was this reference low. So there has been a, a pretty decent amount of technical damage done with regard to having now overhead supply, kind of the dead bodies of all the people who were playing and getting involved in this chop and churn up at the top. And we have come down. We've had a bit of a rally back. Um, we kind of got a little bit into the um, into the supply, but we have rejected. We bounced back up and rejected again, and now coming down. So I have said for a while, and I'm going to go through a few charts of some momentum stocks, and this should be a bit of a theme here, that we may need to retest these lows down here in the 181s, and potentially we could make a bit of a higher high. And we're frozen, which is always wonderful. Anyway, while I'm, uh, t oh, here we go. I just want to kind of narrow, get us into more modern time here. I do believe that um, we should have probably seen a little bit higher here. I was looking for us to maybe retest the, um, the backside of the old up channel here, which would be around the 204s. And it's still possible that we do have that. I believe that that would be an amazing right or right out type of short that could set up for maybe potentially years of downside. If we really are in a bear market, those can take 18 months to 24 months to resolve, and you would still be basically shorting up near the highs. Believe it or not, even up here could still be considered fairly good if, if what I think is potentially possible is, and I'll discuss that in a moment, but we, we will see. We are sort of in a chop zone here. I do think that it's possible we fill this gap to the 187s and maybe even retest down here if the market is squirrely this week. If you start taking out this, um, these swing highs here in the 197s um, and 198s, then I think it's possible we could see the 200, the 202, and maybe even that 204 retest, which I really would love for a, um, a short position. Uh, there'll probably be some price memory down here for some type of a right or right out long for some type of a bounce. I don't know where how far it goes, but 
I think the um, overall theme I'm going to um, say is that we are starting to see a, a trend change here of lower lows and lower highs. It hasn't been confirmed yet with a lower low, but keep, please keep in mind that this is only the first down leg in a potential three to five wave. Um, I don't want to get too wonky with um, Elliott theory, but um, it's possible that we could be um, in for a more severe decline and potentially very severe. Um, I'm going to show you a 15-year um, a chart on the weeklies, and you can see that the um, 2000 peak the 2007 peak were there. We've been in this rally mode. I'm sorry this chart is a little bit cl clustery, but just follow just follow the logic. We have broken out here from this 2007 peak, and there was a minor retest here, but it's been up, up, and away, and I believe it is possible at some point that we are going to come down and retest into there. And you can see that that would be about a 38.2% retracement of the entire rally it would be about a 50% retracement of the, or maybe a little bit more than a 50% retra retracement from that um, debt ceiling uh, low and the um, rally that has ensued. So it wouldn't be out of control, inconceivable for that to happen. I know a lot of people I hear on the TV, the guests that they have on are still very complacent. They are um, scarily saying that they either are buying or many of them are already fully invested, and they all that you know they're still fairly. It's just a, just a flesh wound, right? No big deal, and they're expecting the market to power higher. They might be proven right, but I will say that the setup there is a little bit scary. On an anecdotal um, front, I've been getting a lot of emails from many viewers. Um, uh, many of you who follow me, many of you who watch the videos, and there seems to be a recurring theme that um, a lot of you made a lot of money in the in the kind of bull phase of the market, and recently have been giving back quite d decent chunks of it. Um, there was a gentleman who wrote me in about an Apple position. Um, there were there have been some other ones. I know a lot of people are getting margin um, margin calls and also maintenance um, requirement calls. My advice when you get those are that you close out positions. Um, you probably aren't going to close them out at the best potential prices, but that means that you are out over your skis in terms of um, leverage. The um, if you have a few minutes, uh, Google the geometric series. The um, it, it's great when the market is going higher, meaning that you, if you're margined, you get greater than expected normalized returns, I should say. But when the market goes south, we all know that there's an asymmetry in the market, meaning there's sort of a grind up, and then it's sort of the escalator up, or the stair step up, and then the elevator down. And the elevator obviously goes a lot faster, and if you are margined and you have um, you know, too much size on, you're probably going to wind up giving back a very disproportionate amount of gains and maybe even giving it all back. Uh, it wouldn't shock me. I, I have posed a thesis that we have a lot of the gain, particularly from that breakout, has been from QE. And now if we're going to reverse that, if the Fed is going to make a policy error and raise rates into a slowdown, you know, the... Um, that, that all those gains might need to be uh, taken back. So we will see. Uh, primary trend does come in, into play around the 168s. We'll see by the time, if we, if we do wind up getting down there, maybe it coincides with like a gap fill, like down here around the 165s. Maybe it's like a little bit of an overshoot. It is possible that that, that does happen, believe it or not. Um, I know I sound really bearish here, but uh, that's just because the price action has been more bearish. You know, we broke down, we failed back into range, and we're kind of just chopping around, accepting price below range. It, the longer we're dead, like if this was just quick and we bounced right back up, it would be no big deal. But the longer we spend below the range here, the more price is accepting lower. And once we know, once price can't go higher, it goes lower. Same thing. If price can't go lower, it will go higher. So that is what I'm thinking. That is what I'm looking at. That is really, really key. Um, one of the tells, in my opinion, was Disney. This was a long uh, protracted bull market move up. 
Once you start getting moves in here, I believe I refer to them as uh, when Disney starts trading like a biotech stock, making outsized moves, you know the market is probably going to follow suit, and it sure did. You can see Disney now did come back down and retook this entire move. I believe that somewhere between 90 and 78 here will be where Disney kind of bottoms out and could be buyable. I believe selling some puts into those uh, moves would be good, or you could do put ratios. I believe that that will work. If you do get back up above the 200-day moving average, then we could be seeing the 50 and the 100-day moving averages. But I believe right now you have, you know, a, a, obviously a lower low, another lower low. The um, theory would be now after this sort of bounce consolidation, we either come back and retest here or do make a lower low. So I would be a little bit cautious in stocks like this. IWM also showing um, some fairly decent amount of weakness. This one kind of was starting a little bit earlier with the lower highs and the lower lows. It, it came back down. We we're at a uh, 78. Um, we we're at the 78.6. It, it, it kind of just eclipsed it a little bit more. We bounced back up sort of into the range and now we're rolling over a bit. So we'll see how this plays out. I'm a little bit cautious with this now that it's below the 120.58 and the 117.37, which Long-time followers of me know about. You can even see that the um, the one thirteens here are really key, and we are just you know just below there. So again, caution with this. There is some room to bounce. Maybe if the market gets a little bit firmed up, we could come back up and retest the one seventeen thirty seven or whatever. Maybe we roll over there, but being below there to me is a little bit weaker. The um, strength, oddly enough, has been in the Qs. You can see we did have a test here of trend. This was severely beaten um, due to that like type of flash crash, but we are still closed into the range. Anything above this like 99, I think it's 99.36. Let's see, yep, 99.36. As long as we're above that 61.8, let's say 99.47 to 99.36, I believe that the um, market will kind of it, it, it's a little less telling because this is all your big momentum stocks that I'm going to go through in a little bit. So if if you can kind of get the cues working back up higher, maybe to get some kind of a retest, then I think there could be a bit of a stay of execution. But if we do start losing here and wanted to come back to and retest down into these um, these lows around the 85s, even maybe the 90s. Uh, they, then the uh, the market's going to be in for a significantly larger amount of pain. Don't forget that the queues are mainly made up of Apple and Google and some of the momentum stocks. Um, let's go through those now. Um, since Apple, I was going to do the biotechs, but let's just do those since I'm talking about the queues. Apple here is key. We're right at a um, a key support. This was sort of the gap fill for the move here. 109s, 110s. You know, I've been talking about are key. If we lose those, then I start thinking we see these 103s, 104s again, maybe even the old top, which was the um, 172. Interesting that I'm talking about revisiting old tops from um, past bull markets, and Apple is already doing that. So Apple, you know, is the leader. The danger here, of course, is the lower lows and the lower highs. So I've been talking for a while that. Um, and I, I think people kind of thought I was a little bit alarmist that I thought we can maybe see the big 61.8 Fibonacci retracement here around 85. And if we do get into more of a severe bear market, I think that that could happen really rather quickly. I even believe it or not, could even see 75s. That's really where the full gap fill is of this entire move. That would be a complete retracement. And then that's really what had to happen on the last peak of Apple after this old top. Um, we had to retrace all of those gains before Apple could rally again. I'm going to show you here. You can see that this was the launch point, and look what happened with Apple. It had to come back basically down to retest that launch point. So it wouldn't shock me to see Apple number one come back down into that 61.8 and possibly come back down into where this the launch of this move took place. So I'm, I'm not quite as bearish on Apple as maybe... Um, some of my colleagues are, but I do believe that we could retest them um, down into this primary trend into this like 103 to 100 very quickly, particularly if there's some disappointment in their event that's coming up, um, I believe on the 7th. So we'll see how that plays out. I would be opportunistically looking to sell some puts if we got anywhere down into there, somewhere between the um, 
hundred and ninety two. I do believe there'll be some responsive buyers for people who feel like they missed it here and it could potentially do one of these like inverse head and shoulders things and get a throw back up and maybe retest the 120 if there is some type of a pattern failure and we do move back up higher so that is that is what i'm thinking there so that was apple let's do google so google if you take a look has been a little bit stronger it's been kind of working off you could see it ran up into the earnings it, it went up this was the uh, lower, slightly lower high that was done on their um, split up of the company and now it's just kind of meandering here. I do believe that somewhere between the old top here of the 615s, and you can see we did have a little bit of a breach below but didn't spend much time. Somewhere between there and this like reference low here in the um, 593s, which also coincides roughly with this gap fill around the 602s. I do believe that this area will be an interesting right or right out play for a bounce, or if you want to do put ratios with, you know, with this area and then maybe using the 61.8, or if you can get somewhere in here as your lower strike, you can see the 583s was the main breakout. So if you want to do like long a put down here and then short twice as many down here, I believe that that would be a good play for a put ratio for a move down. Amazon. Amazon blew its brains out, gapped, ran up, gapped, kind of came down into range, crapped down to here, and now kind of is just riding this downtrend lower. We're on a 50 MA. If you're long, I would say that that's a good, as good as a reference of any as a stop. I think put ratios with like the 493, uh, um, for, sorry, 439, which was basically the range breakout here could be interesting basically against trend you can see that that comes in close to around there so I think put ratios against this very near dated will work if you want to go a little bit longer dated maybe long these and then short the um, ones down here near the gap fill like the 483s I'm sorry 49s I don't necessarily know that there's a lot of juice in those right now so you'd probably need a down move to kind of get those on if there is some type of pattern failure back up above the 522s Maybe um, there is a move back up, you know, into the 540s. We'll see. But I'm very cautious on all of these stocks. Facebook, I want to show you on a longer time frame the, um, what had happened here. You had had the um, move up. I had been saying a lot of this was on the back of the Google earnings. It came back up. Um, I had said I thought we were going to get 100. We got pretty close to the 9924s. And we got a very large pullback into range. Look where it stopped, basically at the old top around those 72s. The problem here, and we, and we subsequently bounced back up pretty well. I had said I thought that the gap fill in the 50 MA would be a good sell point, and now it, it has been coming back down. Um, my thinking here is that we're either going to hold somewhere in this range, somewhere between the 81s and like 85s maybe, if, we're, if the market gets a little bit squirrely, somewhere in these 80s I think would be an interesting area to, um, to try to quote unquote buy the dip or to sell some puts. My only caution is that this 72 is cash now by the algos and they might try and re-push it down there to retest that. So I do think that um, some type of put ratios down here against the trend line, very near dated again, that means like next week, this coming week or the following max, I think that um, those can be played and I think that that would be good. If we do retake this 91.48 and we do get like sort of a pattern failure back up, I do think we'll see the um, these 92s again and potentially even retest the old high. I believe that Facebook is doing really well. Um, I think it's sort of being a victim of circumstance. It's kind of caught up in the down move of the market. But, you know, they could go lower. I do believe in selling some puts there lower, particularly as IV gets jacked. Um, Netflix is one I've been a little bit bearish on. Um, you can see that the breakout here was around 70 bucks. It coincides with a um, with you know these these past highs here. This was the breakout, and the stock has done really well ever since. It did have an inverse head. I'm sorry, it did have a head and shoulders breakdown. We came back up down there. We came up, and now we are retesting lower. So this is sort of a really key area. I believe anywhere below 103.88 is relative weakness. It is kind of holding the 100 MA, which is which is good. You can see we knifed below it here to the 50% fib, almost filled this gap completely, and then came back up. So it's kind of, oh, quote unquote, okay 
as long as that we're um, above the kind of close here. But I do believe that this stock has a lot of relative weakness. I'm playing this with some put ratios. I think I have on 80, 90, long the 90s and short two times the 85s, which is roughly where it bottomed here. And I also have 85, 80s, which roughly um, gets it not quite to the full measured move, but um, as you'll see, this will come up um, close enough to the 200 day moving average. I think that there is potential to see the 61.8 right here, so between the 70s. So I think somewhere between 85 and 77s will be a good area for a right or right out play with a bounce. Maybe sell some out of the money puts into that. Maybe the 70s, some longer dated ones. Um, I do think it's possible that we go there. I know it sounds crazy that the stock would basically be cut in half, but you know this was kind of a run up in a bull market, and you know pullbacks, you know larger ones sometimes happen. Bad things happen to good people, right? <laughs> um, I would be all over this um, big time. I've actually um, would be a very large buyer here in the 70s. I think that selling out of the money puts against the trend line, maybe longer dated, or um, you know, right or right out with shares would be good. In the meantime, I'm playing it with put ratios. Price line also looking like a bit of a head and shoulders topping pattern. It did have a lot of relative strength on Friday, though, which was. Rather odd, considering how weak the market was, but um, it did hold the 50-day moving average. You can see it roughly kind of has been holding there. Anything below there, and I think we're going to see a fairly large down move in price line. I would be a little bit cautious as long as it's below these highs here of the the um, 1264 to 12, let's just say 1265-ish area. Anything below there and this like 1280.97, which were these old highs, I think it's a little bit vulnerable. Um, it did have a run up. It did, you know, gap on earnings. People sold it off right basically to the trend line. So it isn't really broken yet, but it is showing some major signs of fatigue, meaning that head and shoulders, I'd be a little bit careful. One I'm not so bearish on is this taser. Um, you can see we came back here, basically retext the, uh, the breakout area like I was talking about kind of could happen with Netflix. This also had a head and shoulders breakdown here. Um, it never retested the, the neckline, which is, I believe, somewhere between the 29s and 30s. So you can see here that there's a potential for an inverse head and shoulders. If there's a move back up, it would not shock me to see the uh, 29s or the 30s retested. Um, and either we accept and go higher or it rolls back over. We'll see. Um, if we start losing the, um, the lows here in the, um, I, I really think the 23s, but let's say 22.73, then I think there's some danger of some retest back lower, maybe into the 21s and maybe even the 20s. So we'll be a little bit careful. This roughly held the 61.8. It did knife through it. Um, some people are a little bit more particular than I am. They needed to hold to the tick. I believe that sometimes markets overshoot, and I often find that the low is put in somewhere between the 61.8 and the 78.6, usually about midway through. That is right where this bottomed. So the, to me, this pattern looks quote unquote okay. Tesla um, has been riding a wave a little bit lower. You know, oil going down is not great for electric powered cars. Elon Musk made a buy at uh, 242. We closed 241.93. I believe it's a, I mean, it's a little bit shy, but kind of close enough for government work. We are kind of riding this down though, so you really do need to see it retake this 255-ish area which is the 50-day moving average, which stalled here. If you can take that, I believe we'll see the old all-time highs. They do have the Model X coming out. Um, I think it's a little bit pricey, more than I had thought. Um, I think a lot of people took it that way as well. If there is weakness here in Tesla, we'll probably see that gap fill down here pretty close to the um, 225s. That was also a really important um, sort of old resistance, which I guess should be support. You, we did come down a lot lower though with the 195s. That was pretty close to this full gap fill. We may, if we start rolling over, anything below 242 to me is vulnerable maybe to retest these lows here. Be careful, those algo, like I said, they cash those levels, they wanna retest them. One other big source of um, pain for the market could be this biotech um, sector. This is the IBB. You can see we've been in a really long protracted bull market for quite some time. The flash crash here kind of basically took it down to the tick. We had a head and shoulders pattern here. I've been discussing that for a while. I'm gonna just show you where, what I'm thinking here. 
we had the breakdown. We didn't even fully get the retest, which I had um, been looking for. Maybe that happens this week if the market does something like, you know, rally, um, and then maybe there's the the rollover. Um, the 320.35 was the completion of the head and shoulders. Those tend to sometimes overshoot. You can see we almost got down to the 61.8 in the primary trend. So this would not shock me if this wants to retest down here. I would be an interested buyer in that scenario. But look, we are making lower highs and lower lows. Just be careful until that pattern reverses itself. I, I do think that there is room for potential rally in this. I do like one stock in there. I do like Gilead, but I will say um, it is holding trend. It's only trading about 10 times earnings or so, which isn't that expensive, but now we are really right into where we need to hold here, these 99s to 102s. Um, this area really need, or I should say 103s, this area, excuse me, is really key. If we give, we'll see the 95s pretty quickly. That was the um, old reference low and possibly the 85s. You can see the um, flash crash took us to the 86s. So that was really the main breakout for a while now. Um, you can see that was the old high, starting to see a familiar pattern here, right? Retests of the old highs, which is what I think the market could do and what I think a lot of these stocks can do. I believe put ratios with this being the terminus would be a good, good bet. I have a few of those on. So that is my thinking with the market. I hope that um, you guys found this useful. Please. Um, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button lower, hit the thumbs up and like, and the best compliment you could do for me is to share this via retweet, via favorite, or even if you want to just send it out to people on your own stream as its own tweet. That would be so helpful. Um, anyway, I hope you guys had a good holiday weekend. Uh, summer is kind of wrapping up and coming to an end, and let's have a good productive trading week. Just be careful, you know, it's okay when markets get crazy. I know everyone wants to catch every move all of the time. That would be, again, I always say like going to the, the horse track and expecting to win every race. It's not feasible. You can win a few of them. You could win one of them, two of them. You're not going to win them all. If you're over your skis with maintenance and margins calls, take down your exposure. Trust me from experience. I know the hope and pray game that you're going to get a rally. And probably the minute after you take it off, you'll get the rally, but that is what keeps you in business. There is the policy that I always say, and it's kind of the keep the lights on business. If you're losing more than 10 to 15% of your entire portfolio, you need to be in cash flat or in such small size that it's almost a joke until you start making trades that are right. If you're in losing trades, just don't play that hope and pray game. Trust me, I know from past experience in a past life, that is really, really a mistake and a lot of pain. I know a lot of you are currently playing that game, the hope and pray game. Do not do it. It is a losing battle because other people are in the same game as you and they are going to have the, the, the same forced margin calls. It's really your other fellow shareholders that are your biggest enemies. Anyway, that said, I hope I gave some, um, some good insight and cheers.